This Challenger is but one of the many cars on display at the Wellborn Muscle Car Museum, one of the country's premier muscle car collections, along with signage and ephemera from the period. As you might imagine, for Tim Wellborn, it's like the muscle car era never ended. We just love cars, my wife and I both, Pam. So we began collecting well over 30 years ago and we put together mostly a Mopar collection up until about eight years ago. And uh, then we began collecting other, other cars with the envision uh, that we would someday have a muscle car museum. And this old building that we're in was a Chevrolet Buick dealership back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, two blocks from our home. So I kind of got the ultimate garage and decided this is a great place for museum. The real core of my collection is chargers. And uh, a lot of times I'm asked, why do I have so many chargers? Because I have one of every year from 1966 forward. And the reason that the charger is special to me, my father had one and I have kept it through the years, but every car is different. So you would find pretty much a big horse version of every mid-sized car that was roaming the streets in 1970. I've got a Ram Air 4 Pontiac GTO Judge convertible, four speed, awesome running, awesome sounding car. We have an LS6 triple black Survivor. We have a Boss 429 with 4,000 miles on it. A W30442 convertible that is really a fun one to drive too. The way that we put together the collection was uh, years 1969, 1970, 1971, which I consider is the very pinnacle of the muscle car era. That's when you had all the biggest of the engines, the Hurst four speed shifters, the scoops on the hood, all the stripes, all the wild colors came during that era. And then it abruptly ended in 1971. So we're focused on the very top years of the muscle cars here and, and the latter waning years of it. In 1971, the Charger entered its third generation and as such was redesigned from the ground up. Most distinctive with a new split grille and more rounded body shape mounted atop a chassis whose wheelbase had been shortened by two inches. They were really having a good time over there. The Charger was just probably the ideal Mopar. It was a big car to begin with. And to get all that much horsepower in it, and the later Chargers just were, design-wise, they just carried through from one end to the other. It was just a beautiful car. As always, with redesigns, there were people that preferred the older model. And the restyled Charger continues to divide the muscle car world to this day. In racing, has everything to do with what comes out of Detroit. You know, I mean, it, it's more aerodynamic, of course, than a, than a barn door, you know, than, than a square box. So uh, it's, it's what they came up with, lower, squatter, wider. It does take a, a while to get used to it if you were really, really into the old stuff. It's a funny body style because I've actually seen the ones that, aren't, that don't look so good in certain color combos and like no vinyl top or this vinyl top or the wrong color vinyl top, the wrong color. I've seen 71 Plymouths and 71 Dodges where I just like go, oh, geez, I, I see what they're saying, you know? And then of course you see other ones and you're like, oh my God, look at that, it's, it's incredible. One such incredible car is this 71 Charger from the Wellborn Muscle Car Museum. Though it lacks the high impact color of other early 70s Mopars, the understated gunmetal metallic paint scheme underplays the power of its 446 pack, the three two barrel carburetor engine option first introduced mid-year in 1969. Dodge slightly detuned this package in 71 from 390 down to a still very potent 385 horsepower and a stump pulling 490 foot-pounds of torque. 440 was a real serious engine for performance. Um, it, in both uh, multiple carburation and single carburation applications, the 440 revved very quickly. If you were to be in a race with, say, a 426 Hemi with a 440, all things being equal, off the line, the 440 would probably take the uh, first couple of hundred feet on a Hemi. The hood sports the optional Ram Charger scoop, making its debut on the Charger. The scoop could be operated by the driver with a vacuum switch under the dash, but external factors kept total production of high-performance chargers to a fairly low number. 
The insurance played a huge factor as well as is not seeing a lot of total production. And in fact, in 1971, the Chargers that I collect, there were only 63 Charger RTs built with the 426 Hemi. And only about 170 plus in, with a 446 pack. So that tells you how rare these cars are from that period.